let's finish up this lesson on shifting gears between the radical form and the exponential form of exponents. We're almost done. So here, in this last section, we are asked to combine like terms. And it's weird to say these do not look like like terms to me at all. So you're right, at the moment they have a very deceptive look. And truthfully, if you will put them out of the radical form and into the exponential form, the like terms will begin to show. So let's see what we have. If we can even combine them at all. I'll say that too. So on this particular problem, we know that while there is not a number out here right now, if there's nothing showing what's really there, what's assumed, a 2, we said that earlier, and also with this one, this is also a 2. So this first term of the square root of a cubed is really equivalent in the exponential form to a of a to the 3 halves. This second term is 3, 3, with a doing something, a to the 5 halves. So the question is, can we merge these two a's together to make more of something? And in this problem, the answer is no. In order to merge these two a's together to make one term as a final answer, your exponents must be identical. Identical. These are not. So because we are adding, because we are adding, we can take this particular example no further. That is all we can do. Let's look at number 13 and see a difference between it and the one that we just did. Number 13, these look strange. I mean, they do. They just look strange. So let's shift gears into the exponential form. So this is really a and it has an exponent that will be a fraction. Which number goes on top of the fraction? The 3 or the 2? Yeah, it's the 2. Good job. It goes in the numerator. And the 3 goes in the denominator. All right. Plus, plus. Big 2. A. And again, because I have a root and an exponent. I know my a has a fraction for its exponent. And again, 2 is the full size power, 3 is in the radical, so I've got 2 thirds. All right, so these two a's have the exact same exponent. This is equivalent to saying, hey, one star plus two stars, what does that make? And you would say, uh, duh, that makes three stars. And I'd say, good job. Except your stars look like an A to the two-thirds. You have a very strange looking star. But this is three times A to the two-thirds thirds. The exponent stays exactly what it is when you are combining like terms. It does not change. It would be kind of like if we had um, x plus 2x. You just say 3x. You wouldn't say 3x squared. You wouldn't say 2x squared. You'd say there's three x's just like there's three stars. So whatever the exponent was here for the problem, that is the exact same exponent as my resulting answer. 
Same thing here. It's just with this particular example, your exponent is quite involved. Yeah, involved. Let's go look at number 15 together to finish this off. So 15, they are asking us uh, to simplify where possible and uh, then combine terms if possible. They are looking for a cube root. 27, let's find out if it can be a cube root. The smallest thing that 27 is divisible by? 3. 3 times 9 makes 27. 9 comes from 3 and 3. So this root of 3 says I need 3 of the same number to make a bundle. I'm not looking at the composites, just the primes. So I have 3 with a cube root of x squared. Ooh, I made a mistake, good golly. This has been a day of being human, wow. Hmm. Three from the bundle, squared. It needs a squared. And the cube root is still around the x that is squared. Oy vey. So can we shift that into exponential form? Yeah, let's do that. 3 squared, 9. x to the... 2 is in the numerator. 3 is in the denominator. All right. We have taken care of this first section. Let's get rid of this mistake in the middle so it doesn't throw me off any more than I'm already thrown off today. And hopefully it won't throw you off any more either. Let's look at the second term of this example. So here, the 256 is not in parentheses to be squared. It's not. And 256 is pretty big. So I'm actually going to build a factor tree over to the side where I have more room to think and work it through. The smallest thing that can divide into 256 is 2. So that comes from 128. What goes into 128? 2 and 64. Ah, 64 is now starting to look familiar and comforting. That's 2 and 32. 32 is 2 and 16. 16 is 2 and 8. 8 is 2 and 4. 4 is 2 and 2. All right. So I need how many of the same thing in order to make a bundle? Four of them. All right. So I'm not looking at any of my composites, just the primes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So I found I have two bundles of twos. So I have a bundle of twos times another bundle of twos. I still have the fourth root of x squared. All right. So 2 times 2, that's going to make 4. And this can now be shifted into exponential form. x to the 
What number goes on the numerator? The two or the four? The two, good job. And the denominator is the four. Can two over four be reduced? It sure can. It's one half. All right. So now, the million dollar question. Are we done yet? Let's check. I have a nine X to the three, the two thirds. Oh. And I have a four X to the one half. Are my exponents that are on my variable X exactly the same is two-thirds the same as one-half no they are not the same so can I do anything more with this problem no it is done yay there it is all finished up okay I want you to do number 14 and number 16 I would tackle them on a whiteboard. That way you have more space to think. And if there are mistakes made, it won't be a disaster on your paper. Um, whiteboards are very helpful for this moment. But if you need some help, come and talk to me.